Turn your hymnals, your Bibles, <laughs> hymnals. Matthew 25, too many songs, too, too many times behind here as a song director. Matthew 25. How many like steak? Okay, okay, keep those hands up. All right, how many like steak? Rare. Okay, one, two, okay, okay. Well, let me ask, let me ask how many like it, uh, you know, just knock the horns off and put it on the plate? How many like it? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, medium rare? Okay. Medium? Medium well? Okay. Well done? Oh, yeah. Christine, that's the way I was for the longest time. It was like it was a, had been a sacrifice. And, uh, but I do like it nice and crispy. And they, she would go, well, why don't we just give you a piece of charcoal or something like that? And I said, well, because I've tasted charcoal. It doesn't taste that good. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk a little bit about well done tonight. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verses 19 through 11. It says, After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. <clears throat> His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I'll talk about well done. Well done. Let's pray. God, be with us tonight. We need you. We need you every second of every day. And especially at the time when we open your word. We need you. Teach us from your word. Encourage us, dear God. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Any child of God that truly loves the Lord must certainly will want to hear Jesus say one day, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, when I was in school, <clears throat> depending on what my focus was, or how good of a student I was, there were times where I was, eh, there was other things going on in my life, you know. If I was dealing with baseball, my mind was consumed with baseball, so maybe I wasn't paying as close attention to my studies like I should. But when I did my work, and how many have had that horrible feeling in your stomach? When you've gone into class and you go, I didn't do my work. How, how do you get out of that situation? I didn't do my work. You know? And you go, oh. Or you come into class and you know there's a test, and that's when you begin to Pray for divine revelation. God, just give me these answers. Give me these answers. But when I was able to turn in my work and or do well on my, on my tests, and then I would get that score back, 98, you know. And that was usually because I misspelled my name or something. I'd get only get a 98. But it was nice to have that well done, that pat on the back. You did well. You did good. And certainly, any Christian that truly is a Christian one day wants to hear from his Lord, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. It's one thing to dream about it and to think about it, but it's an entirely different situation to walk the narrow path that leads to it. <clears throat> I want us to consider just four characteristics that are essential to living out the Christian life faithfully. There are certainly many more, many more. But the first characteristic that we need to consider, if you're going to enter into heaven and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, is your walk of holiness, your walk of holiness. First Peter chapter one, if you will. First Peter chapter one. <clears throat> In first Peter chapter one,
verse 15 says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, all your life, how you live. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy. That's not a question. That is a, that's a statement, right? What kind of a sentence is that, Alice? It's imperative. That's the word. It's, it's a I got that. I got that. It's kind of like when Alice is talking to me. We've got this rule that whenever she speaks, it's always imperative. And so, <laughs> any rate, no? Did I say that out loud? I didn't mean that. Ricky, you're rubbing off on me, Dad. Uh, uh, man, I'll tell you what. I don't know, you gotta watch Ricky with her on phones and stuff, so. See, you know, see what I'm doing here? I'm deflecting, I'm deflecting. But be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Spurgeon said there will be three effects of nearness to Jesus. Humility, happiness, and holiness. Humility, happiness, and holiness. If these three are not present, you need to ask yourself some hard questions. Humility. Do I have a rebellious spirit? You know, we've talked about that a little bit in humility and how it's important in the Christian life. If you're going to do anything for God, it begins with humility. Humility is part of the holiness. 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. James 4, 10 says, Sorry. I have to do things by memory. Okay, James 4.10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And in James 4.6, the Bible talks about how that God resists the proud. We need to be humble. The carnal Christian will give God a few hours per week. We come in on a Sunday, we'll sing, we'll tithe, we'll do all those things. But... <clears throat> does not practice the part where it says, come out from among them and be ye separate. We are in the world and in the world. We're, not, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. We're in the world and of the world when we should be in the world and not of the world. Carnality quenches the fire of the spirit and dries up the rivers of living water. It makes me think of the woman at the well where Jesus said, I'll give you living water. I'll give you living water. <clears throat> Holiness. Holiness. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. See, God wants all your heart. He doesn't want just a little piece of it or part of it. He wants all your heart. He wants all my heart. It's full surrender that he's looking for. Full surrender. And if you're going to be fully surrendered, then a big part of that will be a holiness walk. How do you walk every day? Where do you live? When you're by yourself, what's your heart and mind? What does it dwell on? Are they things of God? We pray that they are. Holiness. Full surrender, someone said, is the fertile ground for seeds of joy and peace. Holiness. Be ye holy. For I am holy. Another characteristic, God's word is to be your authority. We say that the word of God is what we abide by for all faith and practice. In other words, this is what I believe and this is what I practice. If this is what it says, that's what I do. But so many Christians have that buffet mentality where I'll go in and I'll take a little of this I'll take a little of that, and that's, I'm sorry, I cannot have that livered and onions, or I can't have that asparagus, or whatever it is that you cannot palate, and same as said with the word of God, I can't, I can't palate that. I can't take that. That's too hard for me. I can't have that. But the word of God should be your authority. If you're going to be a child of God that enters into heaven, 
The word of God must be your authority if you will hear, well done, now good and faithful servant. It has to be your authority. Got a question for you. I'm looking for a response now, and I want to hear good song voices. What version of the Bible do we use? That's great. You might as well be reading good news for modern man if you don't abide by it. Okay? It's very plain. It has to be your authority. And what I'm talking about, and I'm talking to Christians who have been saved a lot of years, especially, we need to let it fashion us. My father-in-law is 91 years old. He's in that Bible every day, every night. You can find him sitting in that chair over there. He usually has those glasses off. And he's down there like that in his word. He's in the word. He goes through it. And he'll, a lot of times he'll just throw out a, over there in 416. And I'm going, what does that say? You know, he's got it in him. He's got it in him. And he'll get going, and sometimes I go, ooh, I don't know. And then other times I go, oh, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> but he says, I bow to the book. If the word of God tells me to do it this way, that's what I'm going to do. It. No matter if I've been doing it, he's been saved 64 years this month. 64 years. No matter that I've been doing it for 64 years this way, if I come across scripture and it says, do it this way, I'm going to change my ways. Why? Because this book right here is my authority. And if you're going to hear, well done, now good and faithful servant, it has to be your authority. It truly has to be your authority. You can't play games with it. You can't play games with it. I read through this book. I get very uh, convicted by what it tells me. I get up here and try to speak. It's an it's amazing thing to me, Rick, that God has men preach, proclaim the word of God. When we're the sinful creatures that we are. Hmm. But truly, don't hide behind that we have, we use the King James Version here, okay? If you don't follow it. Because that's not a good argument. You're, you know, you're, you're riding somebody else's coattails on that one. You're, it's, it's not real to you. It must be real to you. If we need counsel, what do we do? We go to God's word. We seek it out. Why not? Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says he's known as the what? The mighty counselor. He's the mighty counselor. Do we really believe that? We should go to this. So it should be holiness in your life. You should have God's word as your authority. Another thing that would make uh, a Christian that I think that could go into heaven one day and hear, well done now, good and faithful servant, you'll rely on God and not men. You'll rely on God and not men. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We'll rely on God. We'll trust in God. We'll trust in God when things are not going our way. Verse 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God will break you down in order to build you up. I had a good friend of mine when we got out of high school. Let's see, Randy, Robert, Tony, all went in the Marine Corps. I went to Delta. <laughs> I went to the Delta Forces. Actually, I went to Delta Junior College to play baseball. And they went in the Marine Corps. And I remember Randy came back. What's that, is that called boot camp in the Marine Corps? Any, any ex-Corps people in here? Don't know. Um, at any rate, he came back. And Randy was a sharp young fella. Good baseball player. Uh, uh, Well-established, well-grounded. And I was talking to him, and he said, Donnie, they had me just like this. 
just like this when I was in there. He said, they are in your face. What are they doing? They're tearing you down to make you into the soldier you need to be. One, to help you come back, but also to help you help your fellow soldiers come back. So he tears you down, and that's what God does. He'll tear us down to build us up. The refiner's fire involves fire and heat. It's refining. Turn back to uh, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, we read it this morning. Chapter 4 and verses 8 and 9. There may be troublesome times. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Might be troubled. Might be distressed, perplexed, but not despairing. God reminds us when passing through the waters, I'll be with you. Going through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall you be scorched. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Consider this. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That's in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. We need to learn to rely on God and not men. How many times do we turn to a man or someone else for advice when everything we need is found in the Word of God? Found in the Word of God. And then the fourth thing I think we need to consider, if you're going to enter into heaven and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You need to hold to your course. Hold to your course. Faithful Christians keep the course regardless of the storm. Remember just the other day we preached in, uh, I believe it was Matthew. Let me see if I got it there. Was it Matthew? All right. Yes, Matthew chapter 14. Go ahead and turn there. We, we preached and we uh, learned about the story that we know about, and we're talking about the storm, the storm where this Jesus, and he had fed all the people, and he said, let's go over now, and, and in verse 22 it says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. You know, they're out there in that boat, and they're struggling. And these guys that were familiar with being on the water, many of them, and they're struggling, and they couldn't get anywhere, and they were watching the waves, and the winds were blowing. It was frightening. <clears throat> it was frightening. I'm certain that they were extremely fearful, fearful of their lives. Case like that, you're in a situation where you have to hold to the course. I mean, they couldn't get out of that. But you know, that's what Christians do. We always look for the way out. When something comes and happens in our lives, that diverse temptation. See, I major on that because God is in control. He's in control of all this. He uses all those bad things that happen in our lives to teach us and to grow us. But how many times have I, have you watched Christians that get into a situation that seems to be a little bit difficult for them and they remove themselves for it when God was trying to teach them something. You try to get your way out of it. You know, it's kind of the American way. We live in the land of luxury. We've got to have things easy. Things have got to go well for us. But a faithful Christian will stay the course regardless of the storm. They'll go, no, God's in control. I don't know what he's doing, but I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. The true child of God will persevere. He will continue. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3.
Found a new book there, Chad. It's called the Book of Concordance. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 11 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast. Hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Jesus' words, hold fast. Hold fast. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 says, stand against the wiles of the devil. Things get rough. You're being attacked by Satan. The Bible says, stand against the wiles of the devil. In verse 13, it says, withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. It's like take that hammer and those nails out. If you got those big wide treads on your shoe and nail them down to the floor. What are you going to do? Stand. Stand. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 9 says, Whom resist steadfast in the faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word. Philippians 1, 27. That ye stand fast in one spirit. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Act like a man. Ladies, act like a lady. But act like a man. Be strong. Philippians 4.1. So stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. The Christian that enters into heaven that wants to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, I believe, will practice holiness will allow God's word to be your final authority and you will bend your will to it, will rely on God and not men for his counsel, and that you'll hold to your course despite the storm, despite the storm. Miss Justine, I see these characteristics in you. I see these things in you. And I just want to praise God for you. Uh, God has been good to this church. He's, got, he's allowed a lot of different lives and people to be in this church. But I just want to let you know, you've been an encouragement to me. I know that you're a prayer warrior. I've watched your humble spirit, your willingness to be a part of this body. And uh, when you leave, we will miss you. But we send you with our blessings and our prayers. And we pray that you'll be the encouragement to that new body like you have been for us. And when I was doing this, I was thinking of you. Thinking of you. Praise God. Praise God. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed. It's going to take a minute here. Just ask yourself the question. If I died right now, Christian, if I died right now, and I entered into heaven, would I hear, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant? 